Dude, pare, it's been six years since you've been around, man. And it's time for you to get a makeover. You know, pare, all of your other competitors have already gotten a makeover. So, we also have new competitors as well, so it's time for you to look good. You can get them shorties, dude, if you look like an oldie, pare. Ayos. <laughs> okay na. There you go. Now that's more like it. Hello guys, Reagan here for Reagan's Rides and we are now here inside the Honda Cars Philippines complex where we got invited to unbox the all new Honda BRV S CVT. Let's do this. Here at Reagan's Rides, we do car reviews of SUVs, sports cars, trucks, and everything in between. So subscribe and hit the bell. Honda Philippines has now brought in the second generation of their bold roundabout vehicle, the BRV. This popular SUV has been completely updated to keep up with the hotly contested People Movers segment here in the Philippines. Coming in at 1,190,000 Philippine pesos, this base CVT model seems to offer a lot of value for the price. But exactly what sort of features can we expect from this base model Honda BRV S with a CVT transmission? Let's find out. Let me jump in here really quick and ask you, do you drive a vehicle that doesn't have parking sensors? Do you need one but don't like to drill holes in your car? Well, guess what? With Pulse Creative's No Holes Parking Sensor, you can keep your bumpers smooth and original. If you're interested, you can visit the PCI Car Hub main FB page and mention Reagan for free home service installation as well as special prices on their professional services in all PCI Car Hub branches. Now back to the review. So I decided to show you the drive first because a lot of you don't make it all the way to the end of my video so you get to miss out on the best part. I mean, you don't see the driving experience, guys. Now, of course, this is just a quick test drive and we're just here inside the Honda Cars Philippines complex. So I'm just going to give you an initial impression here. Now, first up, steering feel. Dude, I am quite impressed with the steering feel of the Honda BRV. See, it's it doesn't feel like it's artificial it doesn't it has a nice and solid feeling heft to it and uh, yes we've got a good amount of feedback good amount of response here that's what you'd expect from a honda because well hondas you know honda has always known how to tune uh, their, their steering feel quite well so the same applies to this second generation brv now as for the visibility well dude the Honda BRV, the first gen Honda BRV, had a great amount of visibility. We got a nice and open windshield up front, nice and open windows at the side, and the same applies for the second gen. You see, uh, we've got nice and wide uh, visibility here. Uh, the dashboard is mounted quite low, so this is going to be quite easy to drive, uh, especially for let's say let's say for newbie drivers out there. Now I'm going to take you up a quite a steep incline here. You're going to see this, see? As you can see right now, gentlemen and ladies, we have a pretty high incline here. This is almost as high, or I think a little bit higher than my own parking ramp. So let's see how the BRV can take it. We're on eco mode, guys. And dude, check it out. Ha ha! Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, awesome. See, we're in eco mode. And this BRV has a sport mode and it made chicken feed out of that steep incline. So for those of you out there who are asking, can the BRV go up to Baguio and stuff like that? Dude, it definitely can. Now the reason behind that is powering this second generation BRV is a 1.5 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated gasoline motor that still puts out 119 horsepower and 145 Newton meters of torque. 
Now, dude, that's the same figures as the previous gen. And we also have a CVT transmission here, which is also the same transmission found in the previous generation. But what changed here is, well, we now get a double overhead camshaft engine instead of the first generation's single overhead camshaft. Now, what does that mean? I mean, we get the same power, we get the same transmission. What does that mean? It just means that this BRV will have a much smoother and refined ride uh, versus the first generation. And even while I'm taking it around this test track, this, uh, yeah, this complex, the complex of Honda cars, yeah, I could already feel it. It feels smoother and more refined uh, than before. All right, so we're doing a second run of this incline here in front, guys, because some of you might say, chamba lang, diba? Chamba. <laughs> For my foreign viewers, uh, that's luck, you know, beginner's luck. But we're gonna do it again, second try. We're gonna go up. I'm not even giving it gas, dude. See? I'm not even giving it much gas, and dude, it can easily climb this steep incline. Freaking awesome. That CVT, it works. It works, guys. You know, Honda really knows how to tune their transmission as well. Now, of course, in order for me to give you a more in-depth driving impression of this BRV SCVT, I will have to borrow this from Honda Cars Philippines for several days in order to give you, uh, you know, a better insight as to how it behaves in actual driving conditions. Well, technically, this isn't your base base trim for the BRV because, well, we still get a BRVS that has a manual transmission. Still, if you want a BRV that comes with a CVT, then friends, this is your base model. Now, by looking at this BRV, yeah, it kind of looks like the HRVS, uh, but the BRV, of course, gets seven seats, and this base trim doesn't get Honda sensing. Still, the dimensions are roughly similar to the HRVS. Uh, although, the, yes, the BRV also looks chunkier and more rugged. But guys, when you look at the front grille of this BRV, uh, you see that, yeah, it's in the same shape and design as that of the HRVS. And good news, my friends, we don't really get much chrome here on the front grille. Well, there is that chrome strip up top and that chrome.honda logo, but that's just about it. Now, what surprised me here, though, is the fact that even in this base trim BRV CVT, well, we get full LED lighting units down to the LED fog lights. Now, that, my friends, is something that I didn't expect to get in a base trim MPV. Now, the side has a feature that I immediately loved. Dude pare, even this base model BRV gets a set of 17-inch alloy wheels. You see, previously only the top spec BRV gets 17s, but now even the base model has 17-inch alloys, and that's a two thumbs up for me. Now, if you'll notice as well, the wheel wells have been trimmed down a little bit, uh, such that it now has a sleeker look than before. Now, as for the mechanical bits, well, uh, they're pretty much identical to the previous generation BRV. Uh, that means we get ventilated disc brakes up front, only drum brakes at the back, and for the suspension, we have a MacPherson front suspension and a torsion beam at the back. Now, since the suspension bits are pretty much a carryover from the previous generation BRV, uh, then that means that the ground clearance is still the same at 201 millimeters, which, if you think about it, is, well, still perfectly decent in today's times. Now, despite the high ground clearance of the BRV, well, getting in and out of this vehicle is quite easy because we do have some pretty much like car-like doors here. Now, once you're inside, you'll see that this cockpit, this dashboard, in fact, is almost identical. In fact, I think it's identical uh, to, the, to the Honda WRV. Now, we haven't gotten the smaller WRV here in the Philippines yet. Uh, but uh, whether we'll get it or not, well, only time will tell. Now, if you want to watch that in case it arrives, well, I invite you to click that subscribe button and click that notification bell and become part of the Reagan Strides family. Now, guys, uh, back to the BRV's cockpit. As I said, the design's identical to the WRV. It has this wedge-shaped theme going on here that makes it look wider than it actually is. Now, personally, guys, 
I like this. I like this design. It gives it a nice and sleek and clean look. Now, of course, this is the base trim VRVS, so that means we only get the basic stuff here. Uh, we have cloth seats, we've got a urethane steering wheel and a urethane shift knob, and uh, yeah, the, yeah, pretty much what you'd expect from a base model MPV. Now, the wheel itself only adjusts for tilt though, doesn't really telescope, guys, and that applies even to the top spectrum of the BRV, which is a bit of a bummer for some people. But well, since I'm not really the tallest guy on the planet, it doesn't really bother me too much. Now, as for the infotainment system here, well, it's pretty much a carryover from the previous gen BRV. We got a 7 inch touchscreen infotainment system here with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and we also have the image of a reverse camera there. Now the climate control system is also just a manual affair, although I'm, I'm liking it. I like the design of this climate control buttons because it looks, looks pretty nifty. Now we also have a couple of cup holders here which I will subject to my clean canteen test. As you can see guys, yeah, the cup holders of the BRV can fit my clean canteen flask, my 600 ml clean canteen flask, but it doesn't go all the way in. So I'll give it a marginal pass there. Now, another nifty feature of this base spec BRV is the fact that we have an engine push start button here. And, uh, well, we don't really have a, a smart keyless entry here, just a regular keyless entry. But it does come with a remote engine start function, which is another thing that I didn't expect to get in a base trim MPV. Now, as for the cabin materials, well, they're all made out of hard touch plastics here, uh, which is, well, par for the course for a base model. All right, guys, since this is an MPV, well, of course, passenger space is of utmost importance. So we're now here at the second row seats of this BRVS. And I can tell you that for an average Asian dude like myself, I'm five foot six, you get a good amount of space here. You see, I still have around four inches of knee room and a good, like, wow, seven inches of headroom, which is pretty good, guys. And that's also including the fact that the, yeah, the seats are kind of moved forward because I'm being a considerate person and I'm giving some, you know, some legroom space to the third row passengers well, at the back. Now, as for, yeah, as for the amenities here, well, this base trim gets, well, basic amenities. We got a row of AC vents here on the ceiling, just like any typical MPV. And we also have a 12 volt charging outlet down there at the bottom part there in the center console. Now, as for the, the safety bits, well, as you're seeing on your screen right now, well, the base spec BRV S CVT gets a decent set of safety features. Although if you want to have Honda sensing, you'll have to go up to the top spec trim. Now, as for the third row space, I'm going to share them to you right now. Now, just like any MPV, the third row seats are quite usable. I'm five foot six, guys, and as you can see, well, I, the sitting position is quite decent. You know, the, my knees aren't too high, and uh, I still get around three inches of headroom here. Although I will have to ask the front passenger to, yeah, maybe not, not slouch the seat back a little bit to give me a little bit more knee room. But the well, the seat back of the second row are soft, so yeah, I, I can even dig my knees in there. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a problem. So yes, these are pretty usable third row seats. Now, as for amenities here, well, this is the base trim, guys. So don't expect any amenities here, but we do have a couple of cup holders uh, for your drinks. The rear end of the second generation BRV follows the same simple and minimalist design language that can be found in the rest of Honda's lineup today. It gets uh, an LED taillight units here that are quite the same in design to the ones found in the Honda City, which means that they look good and uh, yeah, they're actually quite sleek looking. Now, when you pop open the manual lift gate, you'll also notice that the BRV now gets a larger cargo space than the previous generation. See, even with the third row seats in use, we still have 244 liters of space here, which as you can see, guys, is good enough for my medium-sized luggage. Now, if you need more space than that, you can always fold down the third row seats, and that, my friends, expands the total cargo capacity to 530 liters, making this second-generation BRV one of the largest cargo capacities in its category today. 
However, if you'll notice, the third row seats don't really fold flat. And I did notice some indentations here on the side though. So I do hope that Honda will also include uh, like a board that you can put here to give you an overall flat space there, which should enhance the versatility of this cargo area. For a base CVT trim, the BRVS delivers an attractive set of features and usable space that should serve most families well. The sleek styling makes it look more like a crossover SUV rather than an MPV. With enough space to transport 7 passengers in comfort, a good amount of connectivity, and the most powerful engine in its class, the new Honda BRVS is set to become another runaway bestseller from Honda. Thanks for watching.